Dr. Baliga here. This podcast belongs to a series of 10 podcasts on obesity. It's derived from an outstanding chapter on obesity in Baliga's textbook of internal medicine available at www.mastermedfacts.com. After completing these 10 podcasts, you should be having a solid foundation in obesity. As you know, obesity is in one third of US adults and is therefore an important area to have at one's fingertips. This outstanding chapter is authored by Dr. David W. Lamb, MD, who is Assistant Professor of Medicine at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. He is also the Associate Director of the Mount Sinai Diabetes Center. The senior author is Dr. Robert Yanagasawa, who is a Professor of Medicine at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. He is the Program Director of Clinical Fellowship in Endocrinology, Diabetes and Metabolism. He also directs the Mount Sinai Weight Management Program and has more than 15 years of experience taking care of obese patients. Multiple choice question. A 42 year old male with a history of type 2 diabetes mellitus, hypertension and obesity underwent RUNY gastric bypass surgery three months ago. He reports complaints of nausea and diarrhea over the last month. These symptoms typically occur after eating a meal. He denies fevers or abdominal pain. What is the most likely complication this patient is experiencing? A. Cholelithiasis. B. Small bowel obstruction. C. Dumping syndrome. And D. Anastomotic leak. And the answer is C. Dumping syndrome. It is important to be aware of complications following bariatric surgery. These can generally be categorized into phases following surgery. The first phase typically occurs within six weeks and are immediate surgical complications including bleeding, anastomotic leaks and obstruction. This patient is beyond this time frame and the symptoms are not entirely consistent with immediate surgical complications that is options B and D. Dumping syndrome occurs in many patients who have undergone Ru and Y gastric bypass and is characterized by nausea, diaphoresis, diarrhea, lightheadedness, flushing and tachycardia following eating foods with high amounts of refined sugars. Patients who develop dumping syndrome should avoid foods that provoke symptoms and should eat smaller meals. The patient's constellation of symptoms are most consistent with dumping syndrome, which is option C. Cholelithiasis can develop in as many as 38% of patients post-operatively. While symptoms from gallstones typically occur postprandially, they are not typically associated with diarrhea and therefore option A is not correct. There are three main types of bariatric surgery currently performed in the US. And then, there, and then there's a fourth procedure, the biliopancreatic diversion, which is performed in no more than 2% of the cases. Laparoscopic adjustable gastric banding, the least invasive and the safest procedure, involves placing an inflatable silicon band around the gastric fundus to create a small pouch, which is approximately 30 mils. This restrictive procedure is reversible and does not cause anatomical gut changes. The Ruin Y gastric bypass restricts food intake by creating in the upper gastric fundus a small pouch which is less than 50 mils, anastomose to a Ru limb of jejunum. Food bypasses 95% of the stomach and duodenum and most of the jejunum. The recently introduced vertical sleeve gastrectomy involves removal of approximately 70% of the stomach with subsequent acceleration of gastric emptying. Gastric banding results in a mean weight reduction of 15 to 20% in one year. Larger reductions can be achieved with vertical sleeve gastrectomy and ruin wipe procedures, that is approximately 25 and 30% respectively.
more than half the patients who undergo Ruan Y gastric bypass have a weight loss of 25% or more at one year. On an average, 5 to 10% of the patients regain weight from their lowest weight at 10 years of follow up, with a higher frequency of full, gait, full weight regain reported with gastric banding than with the other two surgeries. Concerns about efficacy and high reoperation rates have led to a decrease in the use of gastric banding in the US, which accounted for only 6% of the procedures in 2013, as compared with the vertical sleeve gastrectomy and the Roux Y gastric bypass, which account for 49 and 43% of the procedures respectively at that time. Pronounced clinical improvements are observed in most obesity-related health conditions, particularly type 2 diabetes after Roux Y gastric bypass, vertical sleeve gastrectomy, and to a lesser extent with gastric banding. The large and sustained weight losses and metabolic improvements after Roux and Y gastric bypass and vertical sleeve gastrectomy are due mainly to an increase in satiety and long term hypophagia. The complex mechanisms that account for these effects are the subject of ongoing research. Possible mechanisms include changes in taste, food preferences, gastric pouch emptying rates vagal signaling, gastrointestinal hormone activity, circulating bile acids, and the gut mi micro microbiome. Owing to the increased use of laparoscopic procedures, the 30-day mortality rates for all bariatric surgeries have decreased in the past 10 years. Gastric branding has now the lowest perioperative mortality rate approximately, approximately 0.002% with rates of 0.2% and 0.3% for Roux and Y gastric bypass and vertical sleeve gastrectomy respectively. Serious perioperative adverse events parallel these findings with rates of approximately 1% for gastric banding and approximately 5% for vertical sleeve gastrectomy and Roux and Y gastric bypass. About one-fourth of the patients treated with gastric banding or Roux and Y gastric bypass require surgical revisions at 10 or more years of follow-up. Data is limited for the more recently introduced vertical sleeve gastrectomy. Limitations of current surgeries include high cost initially and at one year risks of short and long-term complications and weight regain in approximately 5 to 20% of the patients. However, Roux and Y gastric bypass and vertical sleeve gastrectomy are by far the most effective long-term therapies for severe obesity, a condition associated with high mobility and mortality and healthcare costs. Cesar Roux was a Swiss surgeon who described the Roux and Y procedure. He studied medicine at the University of Bern where his influencers included Christoph Theodor A.B. and Theodor Langhans. Following graduation in 1880, he remained in Bern as an assistant to Theodor Cocker. He, his original paper was published in French Journal in 1893. In 1887, he became chief of both surgical departments at Canton Stepoil, and on the occasion of the founding of the University of Lausanne, became the professor of external pathology and gynecology. He retired in 1926. In Lausanne, Switzerland, in 1926, Roux performed the first case of successful removal of a pheochromocytoma. About seven months later, Charles Horace Mayo, 1865 to 1939, performed the same surgery in the U.S. This series of 10 podcasts on obesity is derived from an outstanding chapter in Baliga's textbook of medicine on obesity. The book is available at www.mastermedfacts.com. It's authored by Dr. David W. Lamb, MD, and Dr. Robert Yanagisawa, MD, both faculty endocrinologists at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine.
in New York. That's the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. Dr. Lam is the Associate Program Director for, the, for Diabetes. And Dr. Yana Sigawa is a Professor of Medicine and the Program Director of the Clinical Fellowship in Endocrinology, Diabetes and Metabolism. He also directs the Mount Sinai Weight Management Program and has more than 15 years of experience in taking care of obese patients. Mm -hmm.